it's Olivia Svana here from Olivia's Catastrophe and I'm here to open and start a new reading vlog. So this vlog is going to be one where I try 50 to 100 pages of eight different books that I'm unsure about having on my TBR. I let my Patreons help me choose which one of these books I should be giving at least a 100 page start to and if I enjoy it I'm going to read it through to the end in this vlog and if I don't enjoy it I am going to DNF it. So we are going to start with this book that I've got right here and that is Once Upon a Fever by Diane Setterfield. I know it's kind of like magical realism writing style, I'm unsure if it's for me or not but I'm going to listen to this actually through audiobook through my library. I've got it for my ears and I'm going to listen while I go and make dinner which is going to be something from the 20 minute vegan which is a cookbook I am loving. We're going to make Danny Danny noodles and start reading this book and see if it's worth my time or if it's going to be a dinner. I did read the first 75 pages of Once Upon a Fever by Diane Setterfield and it's a DNF unhaul and that's not because it's particularly bad or whatever it's actually fine it's got this like fairy tale-esque writing style to it and it's very much about like telling stories and there's the mystery of like how this girl appeared from the water and what happened and it's not even gotten that far into the mystery and it's very lyrical writing in the fairy tale -esque style but that's just not my style you know that's just not what I want right now so I've decided to stop reading that one and to let it go so one out of the eight are actually DNFs but I started the next book for this reading vlog which is a book that I was really unsure about for a very long time and I was thinking you know I'm just gonna let it go but I started it and that's Queenie by Candice Carty Williams. It's about a black girl who lives in Brixton and she's just kind of, she's got some really self-destructive behaviours. She's on a break with her boyfriend. She's not sure what she's doing with her job. She doesn't know if she's happy there anymore. There's drama going down with her friends and it's just about her living her life and why she is so self-destructive and I guess whether she's going to be able to resurface from that. I started it this morning and I read the first 75 pages and then I read the first 175 pages and now I'm at like page 240 so this is definitely what I'm going to read all the way up till the end because it's actually really easy to read and very very addictive and I think I'm enjoying it I think I am enjoying it I'm almost two-thirds of the way through I'm over halfway and I, I think what I like about it is that it in the beginning I had to have a bit of patience I did think it was throwing a lot at us in terms of like ticking boxes for representation like touching on subjects like I need to touch on this subject and this subject and this subject to be good black representation and I felt like it wasn't giving me much of a story but I took the time to like wait and see what it would become and I think it has become something that is more meaningful that has more commentary especially as it's starting to look deeper into the reason why she has these self-destructive behaviors it's definitely driven from a place and a point of trauma and I appreciate her friends in this. I think a lot of the times with these kind of books where the main character is so self-destructive and makes bad choices, a lot of the times the friends that are around them are unhelpful and therefore just further my dislike of the book. But the fact that her friends are actually trying to be there for her, that are actually trying to support her, maybe not all of them, maybe some more than others, but because she actually has a good group of friends who want the best for her around her, it's making this read more manageable for someone who tends to struggle with unlikable characters and I think that's actually quite a healthy balance. So I'm enjoying Queenie. I will read a bit more. I'll probably check in next when I've finished it but now I've got to go to work for my work day and in the evening I'm hoping and planning to watch Fast X so maybe I'll have some thoughts on that. I'm back with another update. So on Monday I went to see Fast X and it was so much Fun. I had a really good time and I really really enjoyed the film. I think the past two Fast and Furious films like 8 and 9 have not been that good and I haven't actually re-watched them but 10 it just felt back on par to being kind of what I like about Fast and Furious, a bit more about the cars, a bit more about like Dom and the family and I got to see the love of my life Michelle Rodriguez and that always makes me happy. <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit sad that she seems to be doing motor like motorcycles and motorbikes right now. I, in the last film she was also on a motorbike 
and it just made me a bit sad because I want to see her behind the wheel of a really cool looking car and also some of the tropes are getting a bit tired like they're getting a bit tired some of the tropes but Roman's jokes were actually funny there were cute family moments and there was lots of just mad driving some unrealistic some entertaining it was a good time okay I enjoyed Fast X I cannot wait for Fast X.5 Fast 11 I'm ready I'm ready give it to me I'm gonna drink it down and I can't wait till this comes out on streaming services and I get to rewatch it again But we're here to talk about the books. So last that you saw me, I was blitzing my way through Queenie and literally the next day, so it only took me two days, I finished reading Queenie. I can't believe this is one I was thinking of unhauling. It was so much fun, okay? So even though this is a book that's quite serious and it's kind of talking about trauma and moving past trauma and recovery, I appreciated the fact that it didn't delve too deep into the traumatic moment. It didn't hyper focus on that and like drag all the trauma to the surface for us to read about it instead it focuses on her like recovery and what comes next and her emotional journey and in some ways this book very much feels like the beginning it's the beginning of her recovery journey and it's not the end it's about recognizing those behaviors and what she plans to do about it and i also just really really liked hearing from the friends her friends were everything to me I loved how they were so supportive and there for her for the most part through her ups and downs so in my opinion this was a very very good read and I'm so glad that I tried it before unhauling it because I did enjoy it so right now we're one for one in terms of books that I wasn't sure about tried the first couple of pages and then like one I finished and really enjoyed and one I DNF'd and unhauled and so that means we are moving along to the next one but before we get to the next one I just want to insert some stills and some clips from the Canongate Influencer Social I don't make it a secret that I work for Canongate which is an independent book publisher here in the UK and one of my like projects one of my babies that I formed was an influencer social that happened in London this week and it was like a lot of work but it really paid off and I'm just so happy with how it went because I think the authors that we had, Catherine Pasifka, Ayobami Adebayo and also Len Penny, they were fantastic. I love their interviews. It was nice to see some friends there from the Instagram, TikTok and YouTube community but also to meet some new faces and yeah it was really good and I just want to show it to you. And I also am now moving along to choosing the next book for this project and that one is The Millhouse Murders by Yukito Ayatsuji and I was very excited for this book because I love a good translated mystery. I keep on picking them up because I want to love them but this one, this one okay, the early reviews and the Goodreads reviews have not been good and I saw a review from Tammy from Tammy Reads and she especially ripped into it okay she ripped it apart and so I'm not sure about this one anymore so I decided to throw it into this vlog into this mix of eight books so it's one of the eight and we'll see what I think of it I'm gonna start it now and do some chores and stuff and I will check back in with you once I am done and once I've made progress in four of the eight books I get to have a cup of tea Oh, which is nice. Okay, let me go and do some reading. Okay, that didn't take me very long at all. I reached page 50 and this is going to be another DNF. If a murder can happen among other things and I just don't feel invested at all at any point and I don't particularly love the way that the character is like, oh, I need to wear this mask because I'm so ugly because of things that have happened to me in my past. Yeah, it's not the book for me. And I just didn't care about anything yet. I wasn't invested in the characters. I wasn't invested in the plot. And by the negative reviews, I can just see this continuing. So I think I'm just gonna let it go. And that is a DNF. That was an easy DNF. <laughs> so I didn't even really get a chance to talk about it, but I started The Water Dancer by Tanisi Coates and I'm DNFing at 20 pages in. So it really didn't take that long. I read the first three chapters and it wasn't working for me. I was somewhere in the middle of chapter three. This one is a slave narrative literary fiction book. And for me, I just, I'm a bit exhausted of reading slave narrative stories. It needs to be something unique, something new to it. And I do think I'm falling towards genre fiction. I've just read so many literary fiction books with slavery involved that 
it is it has become exhausted to me just like reading literary fiction that second world war fiction not that these are not important historical moments in time just that i as a person have read so much of it that i don't think i can read much more and what's interesting is that i read this mostly when i was like 16 to early 20s so it's been like a while now <laughs> like 16 to 20 when I read a lot of this so it's definitely been like a good four years and I still feel oversaturated by it so the way that I often now read slave narratives are in like science fiction or fantasy where for example Kindred by Octavia E Butler where it's very much about slavery but it's also got some time travel thrown in and some other elements thrown in too and that makes it more manageable for me in certain ways or just like I can still process it but I'm getting something that's different to a narrative that I've read many a time before but the water dancer was not providing that for me and I wasn't particularly in love with this historical fiction writing style either I am a hard sell on historical fiction than other readers I think and this one falls more into the camp of like the attic child by Lola J that kind of writing style where it doesn't lean heavily enough on emotion for me but the characters going through hyper emotional moments and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that as of now in this book it's a child main character rather than an adult one it's just lots of little things that are not adding up for me but I do think this book will add up for other people especially people who do enjoy reading historical fiction more than I do so that's one more dnf and we can move along to the next book which I'm not sure what it will be but I'll be back once I know is going down so I'm gonna work on closing out this vlog and I've got a lot of thoughts and feelings to share about how this vlog went and how I felt doing this vlog but before I get in, into all of that and talk about the last book that I read for this vlog if you may have noticed I've cut it short I'll talk to you about that soon I did want to talk about the footage you just saw which was where I was yesterday evening I went to an event with Cassandra Clare which was amazing to be invited to thank you so much to Black Crow PR and the Pan McMillan team for inviting me I had the best time I was a bit awkward I must admit myself but it was really cool to meet Cassandra Clare. I think many of you will know if you've been here for a while, but The Mortal Instruments was one of those staple series for me as a teenager growing up. So getting to meet Cassandra Clare after all these years was actually pretty cool. And something within Team Me felt at peace, felt at rest. And we were there to celebrate the release of Cassandra Clare's first adult debut fantasy novel and this is the first time that she's ventured outside of the Shadowhunter realm since she's been published. She's written 23 books that are all Shadowhunter books and all within the Shadowhunter universe of which I've read 7.5 and so this is like the first venture outside of that which I'm very excited to try because although I loved Shadowhunters when I was younger I just didn't continue on with her books and it's nice to be able to like have a chance to delve back in with something new but we also round here we read books and we drink tea so I've got the tea calendar here we're nearing the end of it but not quite there yet so the next number that we need to choose from is 20 and I can see that one here oh yes perfect this tea is called the three chamomile teas we've had a chamomile before but that was chamomile and vanilla and now we're on three chamomile didn't know there were three types of chamomile. So it's a soothing floral fusion of African, Egyptian, and European chamomile. So I guess European chamomile is the one I'm most familiar with. And it says, sit back on a bed of flowers, chamomile will help the hours gently flow. And it is evening time, so I am getting ready to wind down for my evening, and I think making some really nice chamomile tea, which is what I've been into lately, will be a good one. So let's make this tea, and then I'm going to come back and share the tea on why I struggled with this reading vlog.
Tea has been made. So let's get into why I struggled with the DNF vlog. Essentially, this is what it turned into. I was really hoping I would read more of these books and feel positively about them like I did with Queenie, but that just didn't happen. The latest book that I read was one of the oldest on my TBR, and that is Milkman by Anna Burns, and I read three chapters and I DNF this. And it's because it's very much the style of historical fiction that I don't tend to enjoy anymore, that I used to enjoy, but I just really don't. It's very literary. It's very much what would win the Man Booker Prize and this won it in 2018 and I don't think I'm the audience for Man Booker books and I'm not saying every book that is ever long listed or short listed in the Man Booker Prize is not for me but I kind of know that those books don't tend to be my kind of books anymore especially not with my current mood where I'm more so into genre fiction or into literary fiction that's really saying one specific thing. I could just feel on the nose feminist discussions in this and maybe it gets into more depth further in but from what I read I just thought I'm actually going to probably just find this book okay or dislike it. So I decided to DNF it. And so I've DNF'd every single book that I started for this vlog except for the first one. And in the space of me making this vlog, I was kind of making other vlogs here and there and reading other books here and there. And there were quite a few books that I DNF'd this month that I didn't include in this vlog because I didn't even know I was going to DNF them. I was hoping I was going to like them. And overall this month, so we're in the month of June as of when I'm filming this. I don't know when I post it. I've had more three and two stars than I've had four and five stars. And even though that's quite typical, I would say over half of my reading this month has been three or two stars. And that's not what usually happens. At least half of my reading is four or five stars, or at least this year it's been. And so I've kind of gotten used to this happy medium where even though I'm often talking about books that I find okay or didn't like in my wrap ups, I'm more so talking about books I feel positively about. And I think because I've gotten into a habit of knowing that my videos mostly contain books that I'm happy and excited to be talking about and sharing, it makes me feel more positive about the video because ultimately what I'm here to do, what I enjoy doing on booktube is not only talking into discussing the books but recommending books the key word here is recommending and discussing books that's what I love to do on my channel so when you get a vlog like this one where mostly it's been bummer book after bummer book and books that don't work out for me I was really struggling with knowing that this video was going to be an overly negative video and it's not even negative in that I'm like, this book is awful, this book is awful. It's more so just me saying this book is not for me in particular because my reading tastes have changed since I've gotten this book for whatever reason or the writing style doesn't work for me or valid reasons, but it is a matter of this book doesn't work for me and that's overwhelmingly what this video is and I'm just not used to that. And so I've really struggled to pick up the camera and be motivated to finish this vlog, but I've finally done so now and it's done it's finished i i don't mind doing unhauls because i don't think they're overly negative i think there's a lot of positivity to not holding on to books to letting go of them and even though i start off my unhauls with talking through the dnfs at some point i get to books that i thought were good or okay but i'm giving away for whatever reason and I don't understand why I don't feel like unhauls are negative videos in my head, even though I'm talking about a lot of books that I'm getting letting go of or have DNF'd, but it feels much easier for me to get through one of those videos than it is for me to get through this vlog. That's all I can say. I think it's a lesson learned. I think if I am going to be talking about DNF's on my channel, I'm going to just strictly keep it to my unhaul videos and not mention them in reviews and not in reading vlogs and wrap ups like I usually do. Just stick to that. And it was a good way of doing it. But I do think I also found it more difficult because of the fact that I was DNFing a lot in a month where I've been struggling with reading or not even struggling with reading because I think I've read like 18 books this month or 17 or something, but struggling to find good reads. And that's what I want in life, good reads. Anyway, all this is to say, this experiment was useful to me still because I cleared a lot of books off my TBR that I clearly wasn't going to read and enjoy, hence why they were DNF. It's good that they're gone. That's all I'm going to say. Let's talk about the tea. So the tea has been brewing for quite a while because I got caught up in a song and then I was ranting about a book to someone on brand here. And now I'm here to try this tea. And that's also why, sorry, sorry, one more thing. And that's also why you won't see that many rant reviews on my channel. I don't particularly enjoy filming rant reviews. The main reason I'd film a rant review is if I really didn't like the book. And I think there's an important reason to talk about why I didn't like the book. Then I will do a rant review. So let's try this three chamomile tea that has been sitting here for quite a while.
this is good tea. That three chamomile tea kind of summarizes how I feel about this whole video. It was good. It's very good chamomile tea, but it, it's, it's chamomile tea. I wouldn't be able to tell the Puka chamomile tea from the Twining's chamomile, chamomile tea from any other brand's chamomile tea. They all kind of just taste like chamomile tea. So whether this has got like Egypt, Egyptian and African and European chamomile all fused together, it still just tastes like chamomile tea. Thank you for sticking around for this vlog. I don't think it was one of my most exciting ones. I will have more exciting vlogs in the future, but it was good to try it out and give this a go. Please let me know in the comment section down below, do you DNF books? And if you do, what was the last book that you DNF'd? Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to be updated every time I have a new video. And you know what they say, onwards and upwards. Excelsior!